Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Duct Tape Marketing Podcast. This is John Chance. My guest today is Dave Kirpin. He's a serial entrepreneur with three seven-figure businesses, a New York Times bestselling author of five books, an investor, and most important, a father of three with and husband to uh, wife, Carrie, who's also a partner in the business. And we're going to talk about his latest book, Get Over Yourself, how to lead and delegate effectively for more time, more freedom, and more success. So Dave, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me. Great to see you again, John. Likewise. So this book is all about mindset or mindset change, I should say. Uh, so let's talk about a couple of the shifts that, that you're going to ask people to make in this book. Yeah, so the biggest thing that holds people back from delegating well isn't not knowing uh, what to do. It's the mindset issues or what I call in the book emotional detractors that get in the way. And the, the two biggest ones are fear and uh, distrust. So we're afraid that if we have somebody else do the work, they're going to mess it up. They're going to fail. We're going to lose clients. We're going to go out of business. There's many things that we're afraid of on the trust side. We don't trust people to get the job done. Our people have let us down in the past, and that makes it harder and harder to trust. And then the two other ones that are a little smaller, but that I do see popping up uh, now and again, are the need to control everything and the need for things to be perfect. If it's not perfect, it, it's not worth doing. And those things get in the way of, of good delegation as well. You know, over the years, I've learned kind of the hard way uh, sometimes that that not delegating or like not letting people just run with stuff and trusting them is really disempowering, isn't it, to the team? I mean, even if even if it's done with because, oh, I want it done right. I mean, it really teaches them, oh, I just have to wait for you to tell me what to do. It is. So, you know, one one thing I write about and, and, and like to remind people is if they've ever, especially entrepreneurs and small business owners, if they've ever worked for somebody else, mm -hmm. many of us have had the experience of working for a micromanager. I know mm -hmm. I had that early on in my career and it was miserable. I felt so disempowered. I felt so... Uh, a bitter. I felt so just uh, unenthusiastic about my work. And so now that now that, uh, you know, your listeners are on the other side of the coin and, and and entrepreneurs and small business owners have an opportunity to be better, we need to remember what it was like to yeah. be micromanaged and make sure that we're not that kind of boss. Yeah. You know, another thing that I know I run into a lot of business owners, entrepreneurs, particularly entrepreneurs that are, you know, they're, we'll figure this out, you know, whatever it takes kind of mentality. Um, a lot of times the the work that they started doing, the work that the business began with, that the, that was kind of their passion and joy, it doesn't make sense for them to do it anymore, but they love it. <laughs> and and that I find is is a real challenge. You know, you know, it's really funny. I'll tell you, I, I, um, I, this book is with Ben Bella and Glenn's a wonderful uh, guy. He's the publisher. He's personally involved. You know, it's a smaller imprint. Yeah. And uh, he did the first read and he came back. And in the book, I talk about three things that every leader uh, uh, should do. Three things and three things alone. Set the strategy and vision, uh, hire the right people for the right seats and assure access to enough capital and resources to get the job done. Those three things, three things alone. And Glenn pushed back a little. He said, well, what if what if you like doing things? What if you like doing marketing? What if you like doing sales? I said, listen, I'm not saying you can't do these things, but a lot of people use excuses that, oh, I like doing this. I'm really good at this, or I really like doing this, so I'm just going to keep doing it. But eventually that, first of all, that disempowers the, the, the team that's supposed to be doing it. Yeah. But second of all, you know, the stakes here are big. The stakes aren't just uh, uh, your successful business. The stakes are your time that you only get once. Yeah. And I write about people on their deathbeds, John. You know what percentage <laughs> of people on their deathbed deathbed say, "I wish I had worked more." I'm I wish guessing I somewhere around zero. <laughs> so I, I wish I had built a bigger <laughs> business. Somewhere around zero. But what percentage of people on their deathbed said, "I wish I had more time with my family. I wish I had more time with my close friends." I wish I had more time to pursue travel and passions and different things that are personally meaningful for me. So, so many people have that experience. So why should we get obsessed with doing marketing for our business only because we like it or we're good at it? If it's taking us away from our family, our children, yeah. the things that are important to us, it's just you have to weigh the relative benefits of doing any particular task or project versus other things that you could be doing with your time. Well, and you, uh, you know, I said at the beginning of this, uh, you've you've uh, run several seven figure businesses. You do the math on that. You know, your break even is about one hundred thousand dollars a month. You know, right? And it's like, uh, can I afford to do thirty dollar an hour work? 
for the business, you know, at any time, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's right. And, and I, you know, I'll tell you, as, as I've gotten older, I'm more experienced here. My, my, um, my accomplishments have changed. I think for a while I would have said my biggest accomplishment in business was, you know, the, the, the money. And then, yeah. and then I moved on to my biggest accomplishment in business is uh, being uh, uh, rated uh, best places to work in New York for five years in a row. You know what my biggest accomplishment in business is now it's, Having businesses that allow me to check out at three o'clock p.m. every single day and spend the next uh, four hours with my son doing homework and having a catch. That's time that I will never, ever get back. And I I've done that by delegating, by letting other people do the work, by empowering them, by stepping back and saying, you know what, if it gets 80 percent done the way I would, would have wanted to, that's definitely enough. Who cares if it's 99 or 100 percent precisely the way I, I would have wanted it? You know, I've had people come to me, John, and say, you know, Dave, I built a really big business. I made a lot of money, but I missed my whole kid's childhood. Yes. Is it really worth it? Yes. That uh, leads me straight into the 2015 World Series. Shall we talk about that? <laughs> oh, no. I knew you were going to bring that up. You know, it's been a while since KC was. Uh, I know. I know. Very we're, we're trying too. to actually get back to respectability, so I won't. I won't mouth, bad mouth too much. So, so you, um, you, you actually hinted at this um, about like the three things somebody needs to do. Uh, you actually have a model that you've built uh, that you've given it a, uh, a lovely acronym, like as consultant author types like. You want to? You've already kind of unveiled a little bit, but you want to put it in context. Sure. So I'll, I'll give you uh, two two uh, quick. Um, acronyms here that because I love acronyms. So the first is the share model that it focuses on the three things and the three things alone that, that we as leaders should be concerned with and what to do with the rest. So those three things are the S is for set the strategy and vision. The H is for hire the right people in the right seats. And the A is for assure access to capital and resources to get the job done. The R is to remind ourselves that every other task on our plate, every other project on their plate, every other opportunity or obstacle or challenge can be delegated. And the E is for empower. Instead of making somebody do it, I love the word empower. Give somebody the opportunity to, to make their mark on, on, on that work. Yeah. I, I tell you, um, as I, my organization's grown and I read this somewhere, so I don't claim that I came up with it, but I love to use this term. You know, when I'm delegating something, a lot of people want to micromanage, you use the word, um, talk about all the, you know, do it exactly this way. Um, and I love to just say, here's the definition of done. <laughs> like, here's what it's got to get to. Uh, what does that look like? So talk a little bit about, um, do in the book, um, you know, you, obviously delegation is a big part of this. Um, so a lot of people struggle with how to do that. So talk yeah. a little bit about how to do that. Yeah, so that's my five, that's my second acronym, right? right? So I've got a, 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 what I call the five C's model. So five C's to remember along the way. And I'll briefly go through each, John. The first C is choose choose the right person. And this is uh, no small task, I get it. Um, the biggest mistake people make here is choosing the first person that happens to be there. Yeah. Like, okay, well, this is my assistant, so she'll do it. Or this is my cousin and he works on the business, so he'll do this. Um, you need to be, of course, very thoughtful about um, who to choose to do the work. And the good news is in today's world, there are freelancers, there are contractors, there are vendors, there are agencies, there are um, apprentices, um, one of my companies, there are uh, you know, Fiverr and Upwork and all kinds of ways to find people and the, to find the right person. Right. The second C is communicate clearly. Verbally is great, but put it in writing what your expectations are so there's uh, no misunderstanding, there's no confusion, there's a lot of clarity about how to do it if you insist, but better to the point we made earlier, what that expected outcome is, what the finish line looks like. Yeah. The number, the, the third C is to uh, coach them yeah. on their way to success and cheer them on on their way to success. I never think of myself as a manager. People hate managers. I think of myself as a coach. People like coach coaches. Coaches are the best cheerleaders and they help people get to a successful outcome. They help their teams win. Managers are like, oh, ew, ew. I just, <laughs> nobody even likes the word. Um, the fourth C is check in on the regular. The, how, the frequency of your check-in really depends on 
um, the the scope of the project. But I do not like like uh, uh, daily. Uh, some people are overdo it here with daily check ins or hourly check ins. <laughs> um, you know, unless it's a three day project. Um, I like I like once a week check ins, sure. 15 minute check ins. How's everything going? What are your challenges? How can I help you overcome those challenges? And then the fifth C, and this is often forgotten, once the task is actually accomplished, congratulate them. Mm -hmm. Celebrate success, right? right? right. Um, look, learn, let's learn from our mistakes along the way, but let's really emphasize how great it was that we got to that outcome so that they have a good feeling in their mouths and good, good memory of the whole thing. And, and y'all can, you know, rinse and repeat and do it again. So one of the things that a lot of organizations, I see this, um, you know, a, an organization grows, they need people to do tasks or functions. So they start hiring people, but there really isn't, um, it's a very flat uh, organization. Uh, there's, there's not, uh, there's not a leadership team per se until an organization gets really big. And so the entrepreneur that is now just managing a whole bunch of people. I know you, the, the M word you didn't want me to use, but um, you know, how do, so, so what role does mentoring to create leaders inside your organization play, or do you go out and find that leader? Yeah, no, it's huge. Um, and, and this is, um, I think a mistake folks make is, hiring only junior level folks or thinking right. they can't afford senior level folks. So kind of keeping a junior, which can work for a, for a certain amount of time. But the the downside, like you mentioned, is over time, um, you're, you're still now you're maybe managing like seven <laughs> or eight different people in different functions. And that's not easy. It's, 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 it's frankly very hard. You might as well be doing the work yourself at yeah. that point. Yeah. So it is really important to either bring on more senior talent and folks that tell me they can't afford it. I call BS because share some of the equity, share some of the pie and you can afford great talent when you share some upside with, with folks or mentor people and raise them up and give them a chance to succeed. And, you know, we built, I built a, 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 a one of my a million dollar businesses, you know, I co-founded with my uh, uh, apprentice, my assistant at the time, he was 20 years old and, I'm, and I empowered him and I gave him an opportunity to lead and 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 and, and help to mentor him. And three years later, he had a million dollar business at the age of 23 years old. So yeah. I mean, people can accomplish greatness when we give them a chance and empower them and give them the tools to succeed. Talk a little bit about, I mean, you mentioned one of the obvious ones, you get yourself in a place where you can leave the business, shut the door, forget about it at three o'clock. three o'clock. Um, but what are some of the techniques for balancing that? I mean, because the realities are, I mean, there is a lot to do in a business and a lot of demands, you know, especially on the owner, especially if money's tight, you know, it's like, I got to keep working to, you know, pay the, pay the people I'm delegating to now. Um, are there some practices that we should start exploring um, if we really are going to be serious about this balance idea? Yeah. Well, first, uh, let me give you another another good hack uh, for uh, delegating on the cheap <laughs> is uh, is AI and GPT. And if folks, yeah. I mean, I'm may maybe it's obvious, but I, I keep running into folks that just haven't used the tools. So I'll I, I think it bears it bears saying again, yeah. uh, uh, GPT tools like ChatGPT are really massively helpful for things like research and copywriting, uh, drafting pieces. Um, you should absolutely be using these types of tools. If you can't afford an assistant, if you can't afford junior staff, uh, absolutely do that. Um, I, I use my calendar uh, religiously and um, I prior and I book time to, to do things. And I book time that is unbookable by others yeah, uh, yeah. to work on myself, to, to exercise, to spend time with my kids. And I'm fierce about it. Uh, it only works if you're fierce about it. Yeah, but yeah. for me, the calendar is a wonderful, wonderful tool. Yeah. So uh, I, I highly recommend folks that haven't um, been strict about using their calendar that they that they think through again their priority. Vern Harness said to me, "You can understand your business priorities by looking at your calendar and then understanding how well you're really you know utilizing that." Another surprisingly good um, sort of I wouldn't call this necessarily a tool, but kind of a hack. Um, you may laugh, but go on vacation. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, like, literally, like, make find an excuse to go on vacation. I'm sure your family won't mind, right? And <laughs> and 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 if and if and if you think you can't afford it, you know, go on a staycation, go on a yeah. cheaper vacation. You don't need to go to Fiji, but um, go on vacation, which forces you, whether you think you're ready or not, to start to delegate, to start to set some boundaries, 
Um, on, on on my vacations, I I limit myself to an hour a night of work catch up at yeah. uh, ten o'clock p.m. Once the wife and kids are all asleep, I do my hour of catch up, and then I'm shut off the rest of the time. And that that forces me to um, give other people at, back at the company a chance. And guess what? The house didn't burn down. You know, <laughs> things things yeah. things will be okay for you if you go on vacation and and you shut off for a couple yeah. of days. So um, increasingly, and you're, you're, you know, when people hear the word delegate, sometimes they're talking about virtual assistants or, you know, people that are in other parts of the world that can do uh, things, uh, you know, that they need to tasks that they need done. Um, how do you kind of balance all of that with the fact that, you know, you're not in an office, it's really tough to build culture, you know, to understand people's goals and motivation. Uh, what are some things that maybe specifically need to be different, a little different because, you know, we're all spread out and distributed these days? Yeah, it's hard. You know, I, I will say that I love hybrid. I love remote. Uh, you know, we've built now at least one, one company completely remotely, maybe, maybe two completely remotely, but it does require extra work and extra attention. And um, uh, my my biggest recommendation around this is taking a couple extra minutes in every meeting and in every conversation mm -hmm. to like go with the small talk. Because the thing is in an office, in, in real life, if you will, or back, I guess I would call it real life in the old days when we had offices, um, we had actual water coolers and we had actual opportunities when we're hanging up our coat to say, you know, how about the Mets? Can you believe they crushed KC again last <laughs> night in that interleague play? Um, in, in today's world, you know, people jump on a Zoom and it's immediately like, OK, task, task, task. Yeah, yeah. And that's efficient. But at what cost to your culture and what cost to your right. relationship? So yeah. I think the biggest thing when, we, when we're establishing a uh, uh, relationships with virtual employees and virtual contractors of which i mean almost all of us have that now right is is to take a couple minutes at the beginning and the end to simulate what we might have had in the real world um some years ago of like just hey how was your night you know watch any good tv last night what you know uh what you know what are you up to this weekend? That, that, that sort of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Dave, I appreciate you taking a moment to stop by and uh, share some uh, with us about get over yourself. You want to tell where people are, uh, invite people to connect with you or find obviously uh, the book, which I'm sure can be purchased anywhere. Bookstores everywhere. Uh, get over yourself. Book.com has a free uh, chapter download all about delegating chores to your kids. Right. So nice. I think you know, let's apply these same principles of delegation. Uh, to, to the home. And I do office hours, free office hours with anyone that wants to meet with me every Thursday afternoon. You can go to scheduledave.com. I'm delighted to help you with any of your delegation challenges or your business challenges or your book writing challenges. John, I'm so grateful. Thank you so much for having me. Back oh, you on. bet. Well, again, I appreciate you taking a moment. Hopefully we'll see you uh, one of these, these days soon out there on the road.